Hello, this stunning lace deserved to embellish something like this. I had 2 meters of white cotton on. To draft the pattern, I used a textbook of needlework, knitting and cutting out from 1893. The voice measurement of the pattern matched mine, so I simply copied it. The fact that both the front and back of the pattern were drafted on the same half of the paper caused quite a bit of confusion. I folded the paper. I cut out the pattern along the lines of the back. I unfolded the paper. I cut along the lines of the front. Of course, I didn't have such a huge sheet of paper, so I had to piece it. Then I decided I wanted to make my drawers with a yoke. I wanted an 8 cm 3 inch wide yoke, so I had to water my pattern. The pattern was huge and I had to use as much fabric as for two chemises, I wasn't happy about it at all. At first I sewed the legs, I made French seams. I started with running stitches wrong size together. I trimmed the edge, which is always important, but especially when your fabric is sheer, as the fraying threads would show, presenting an ugly side if you missed this step. I turned the leg to encase the allowance. Then I sewed along the edge a tiny bit below the encased allowance. I alternated a back stitch and a running stitch. This fabric was very soft and lovely, but a bit weird to sew. I used a very thin thread, but I still ended up with knot-like stitches. I sewed the center back and front. I started sewing the drawers with the legs because I intended to make an open front, but I realized with a wide yoke requiring at least two buttons, a front closure wouldn't be the best solution. If you want to make close crotch drawers, stitch the front and back centers first, then you can sew both legs in one continuous seam. You can't do that so nicely with the centers. To draft the yoke, I followed the instructions in The Art of Dressmaking, published in 1803. I decided a less drastic slope for the center back would do. This was half a yoke, where the front and back weren't exactly symmetrical, so I thought since I was making a side closure, I shouldn't simply rotate the back closure of the yoke to the side, 
but should, with pseudoscientific methods, make a new side closure. I marked the side and made a copy of both the front and back parts of my half yoke. I joined the new pieces to the respective ends of the half yoke to make a full yoke. The lower edge of the center back needed to be rounded, and I had a whole yoke. It dawned on me that the original pattern included overlap for the closure in the back, which I had to take out. I took 2 cm from each side, but I don't know why from the sides and not from the back and front. I was and still am very confused. When cutting the yoke from the fabric, I would add 2 cm to both ends. I didn't have much fabric left and this yoke was a shameful waste of fabric. I added 2 cm to both ends for overlap plus seam allowance. I marked the center front and back. I should have marked the side as well. I backstitch along the side and top edges of the yoke. As far as I know, drawers used to have a back closure, a front closure or a closure on both sides. It would have been much much easier to make two side closures, but I couldn't see any real practical reason to have two closures and I hate plackets plus didn't want to sew four buttonholes. When I cut the drawers, I forgot to mark the sides and the place of the placket. It was more difficult to do it now. I made a 24 cm long slit, including the opening in the yoke. I cut a strip of fabric on the grain. I needed a 2 cm wide placket, but couldn't calculate how wide the strip should be, so I cut it really wide so that I could trim it to size later, when I had more understanding of it. I opened the slit in the side of the drawers and basted the strip to the edge. I had to overcut the edge because it frayed too much and I had to make a very narrow seam. Then I backstitched along the edge. This is not the kind of placket drawers usually had, at least the antique ones I've seen. However, although I had made different kinds of plackets, I just could not understand how to make them anymore. I could remember this one, which actually is the one I hated the least. I marked 2 cm from the center, then another 2 cm plus 1 cm for allowance. 
I cut the allowance off of the side of the placket that would be on the top when closed. The allowance of the other part came under the corner of the placket. I folded the strip. I backstitch along the edge. The other part of the strip had to be stitched to the garment along both edges. I am really really sorry that I could not explain you the steps better, but believe me, I was just as confused as you are. I was basically reinventing something that I could only very vaguely remember. Now that the placket was ready, I clipped the allowance of the yoke. I was angry I had to do this because it shows through the sheer fabric and is ugly. I don't usually need to clip the allowance of the yoke, but here the curve was too drastic, so I had to. I sometimes cut the allowance really short instead of clipping it, but I was afraid the seam would stretch, so I didn't. I kind of regret it. I backstitch along the top edge. I marked the side too. I marked the other side of the drawers as well, which I had forgotten to do earlier. I gathered the back of the drawers and pleated the front, which I unfortunately have no footage of. I joined the outside yoke to the gathered and pleated edge, right sides together. I backstitched the seam. I trimmed the allowance. I turned the edge of the inside yoke and basted it. I decided to cut the corners of the allowances off at the placket to reduce the bark. I backstitched along the bottom and side edges from the right side. To make the hems of the legs more easily, I used the width of my ruler.
I fold it and press the hem along the dotted line. Then I folded the hem again, matching the edge to the creased line. I trimmed the edges. I didn't trim them before using the ruler trick because I was afraid I might accidentally cut one of the legs shorter, in which case I would have had to struggle to make them the same length again. If I had trimmed one of them shorter by accident now, the creased hems would have been still in line. I used a half back stitch to sew the hem from the right side. The half back stitch is a back stitch that goes back halfway. I made longer stitches forward. Those only show on the wrong side. I made the backward stitches shorter. I think it's really decorative. I measured 3.5 cm from the very edge. I can't say the inches, I'm getting familiar with the imperial system, but it's difficult. I pressed the fabric along the dotted line, then measured 4 mm from the new edge. I sewed along this dotted line using the running stitch. I sometimes made the back stitch. I measured 1.5 cm from the edge of the tuck. I pressed the fabric along this dotted line. Then I made another dotted line 4 mm from the edge. I stitched the second tuck, then I gave up making tucks. I realized my beautiful lace was of a different shade of white than the fabric, but it was too late, I had my heart set on this lace. I stitched the lace on the hem using the slip stitch. I sewed two buttonholes and attached mother of pearl buttons. The buttonholes turned out pretty ugly, so you aren't allowed to save them. I didn't gather the legs into a band because this was my first venture into sewing drawers and I wanted to keep them as skirt-like as possible. If I change my mind about the legs later, I can easily change the style by cutting off the hems and putting them back on gathered into a band. These drawers are rather long, which is my preference. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell icon if you want to get a notification when I upload a new video.